All right, y'all, welcome back to Combat Arms Channel. Okay, so today we are going to be talking about making entry into a room and how you're actually going to clear the room out. So we're gonna talk about points of domination whenever you actually enter the room. But before we get into that, we're gonna talk about everyone's role as far as who they are entering the room and what each person is going to do. So as you, as you have people enter a room, you have a number assigned, at least that's how we would do it. So the first person in the room is going to be the one man, second person, two man, so forth and so on. It's not going to be, okay, I'm going to be the one man, I'm going to be doing this at every single you know entry or every single room. It's not going to work out like that because as the stack gets messed up, as people move around inside the house, you're going to end up doing different things. So you're going to get roles assigned to you and you just need to be flexible with whatever role you're actually doing. In addition to that, we're gonna be talking about something called the fatal funnel and then also the immediate area. So you might've heard the term fatal funnel before. So basically what that means is if there's bad guys inside this room and I'm trying to come into this room and they know that I'm coming from this direction, they're going to aim all of their weapons, most likely, you know, if they're smart, they aim all their weapons at this door frame. So you pretty much have this funnel because you have this entire room and all the rounds are coming into this small area. So there's going to be, there could potentially be a very high concentration of rounds coming to this area. So that's why it's called the fatal funnel. So you'll hear people say, you know, don't get stuck in the fatal funnel. Don't stop in the fatal funnel. So that's why, you know, it's always good to learn how to manipulate your weapon so you're not getting, you know, jammed up whenever you're actually going through the door frame. But at the same time, you need to understand that if you're pying off a door, so like we would train like this, if you're doing this, you're, you know, you're providing cover for yourself with the door frame. So if you're pying off like this, that doesn't mean you're being stuck in the fatal funnel. That means you're clearing out the room very slow and monotonously and that's totally fine. You're not, you're not necessarily getting stuck in the fatal funnel doing that. So when we're talking about pieing off, don't worry about the, the fatal funnel in, the, in that regard because you're clearing out the room one section at a time. So there's only going to be a sliver of a portion of the room that can actually engage you at that time. So you're totally fine with that. Now with the fatal funnel, again, it's just pertinent. You don't wanna be, you know, if you're pieing into a room, that's okay, but you don't wanna just, you know, run in front of the doorway like this and get stuck here because right now you have everyone, you know, you could potentially have like 20 people aiming their weapons at you and you're about to just get perforated because you decided to just quickly jump out and come in in front of the doorway. So you'll see that a lot. I'm kind of maxing out my lapel mic here, but you'll see it a lot where people will just go straight into the room and clear out their corners. And you know, that's fine if you're gonna do it violently, if you're gonna try and do it, you know, quick and, and you know, try and take all the danger areas out as quick as possible. That's cool, but at the same time, when you're doing that, if you're not clearing all this stuff out, which you're probably not, because you're gonna be focused on your, your corners, then you're going to be potentially taking rounds to the side. So just things to consider, you know, you can take that dynamic entry and just try and go super quick and everybody might know exactly where they're going and that can work out, but there's some dangers associated with that. So now when we're talking about actually entering the room, we have something called the immediate area. So that's basically just picture like a, a six foot bubble coming off the doorway. And we call it the immediate area because that's Oh, that's what you're seeing immediately. That's what you have to deal with immediately entering the room. So you're, let's say you're going into the room, you weren't able to pie off, someone just opened the door for you and you're trying to go into the room. If you have something inside the immediate area, in the immediate area, whether it be a piece of furniture or what have you, you need to take it down as quick as possible. So let's say you enter a room and you weren't able to pie it off. If there's a person inside the immediate area, if it's an occupant, get them out of the immediate area. You need to push them out of the way so you can make, so your, you know, your follow on guys can make entry and not have any issues getting stuck in the fatal funnel. So you don't wanna, you don't wanna get stuck on anything inside the immediate area because that means you're probably gonna get stuck in the fatal funnel. So if you have an occupant, make sure you get them out of the way. When I say occupant, that's basically, a, you know, not a bad guy. So if you have an occupant, you know, well, it could be a bad guy, but they don't have a weapon. You know, you're gonna control them, you're gonna do whatever you want. You can flexi cuff them. Well, not whatever you want. You can flexi cuff them, get them out of the room, make sure someone else handles them. But you wanna get them out of the immediate area so they're not having you guys get stuck inside the fatal funnel. So get them out of the immediate area. If you have a target, of course, we already went over indexing, so you can engage the target quickly and push them out of the immediate area. If you have a piece of furniture, you clear that out on the move. So let's say you have a cabinet 
right here, as opposed to, you know, being like, oh crap, there's a cabinet here, I'm gonna look this way. If you can go around the cabinet, look at the cabinet and then go around it. So here we go, we have this chair right here. Let's say this was a closed door, someone just opened it up for me and I'm going in. Oh crap, there's a chair, I'm not just gonna be like, all right, well, and then I'm stuck in the doorway. I'm gonna see the chair, I'm gonna go around it, clear it on the move, and just get out of that immediate area. Now at the same time, the immediate area is where you're trying to implement your flashbangs. So if you're throwing a flashbang, if you get it in the immediate area, that's, that's ideal because of course, if there are a lot of bad guys and they're looking at the door, if they see something fall right, you know, just inside the room right here, they're probably gonna look at it, you know, but if you have someone throw a flashbang, they could potentially throw it behind the bad guy, they can throw it to the back of the room, it's not really gonna do so much. The bad guy's probably not gonna be like that looking at the flashbang. So if it falls right inside the media area, that's sort of the best way to do it as far as just having a distraction or implementing your diversionary devices. Again, some people might get taught different things. Now we do have something called banging deep, which basically if someone goes and starts making entry before you're able to get that flashbang out into the immediate area, you don't wanna you know, bang your dude who's inside the immediate area. So you're just gonna take it because you already pulled the pin and whatnot and you're just gonna chuck that sucker to the back of the room and say bang in deep. So if you guys saw my merch design where it says bang in deep, you know, it could have two meaning, but that's what we actually mean when we say banging deep. So that is something, but generally you're gonna try and implement the flashbangs inside the immediate area. So again, like a six foot bubble. Okay, so again, we're going to be assigning numbers to the people going inside the room. Now, if it was a closed door and I had someone open the door for me, I'm probably going to be the one man because I'm going to go straight in. Again, the person who's first exposed on that closed door is going to be flowing in first because he's first exposed and it's a lot easier for him to go in if someone's opening the door for him. So he's gonna end up being the one man. I could have someone behind me as a two man or the doorman could end up being the two man. Now, if it was an open door like this, let's say this was an open door. If I pied across, did my thing, Okay, there's you know some dead space behind some furniture, but the two immediate danger areas are this corner and this corner, because I couldn't necessarily see it when I was coming from over here. Now let's say we have a stack over here. Now I have a buddy who's over here with me. Again, it'd be nice if I have another person, but hopefully you guys can visualize it a little bit. So let's say I just pied across, my buddy's here and I'm here as well. Now we want to take out these corners almost simultaneously. It's going to be a little bit hard, but if you practice, you can get it to be almost simultaneous. Now it's natural for me to go here to this corner. You could have people, you know, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna, you know, button hook and then I'm gonna go around and, and do all this crazy stuff. Try not to be the, the button hooking kind of guy. And what I mean by button hooking is the guy who does this. I mean, it's just, it's just a pain in the butt, so don't be that guy. Now, the one man will decide whatever he wants to do, but it's a lot easier if I pied across. If I have a buddy here, it's natural for me to go this way and him to go this way. So the way you're going to sort of signal that is I can say, you can do verbal, so I'll be like, ready, and he'll say, move. So he'll tell me to move, and I'll go clear my corner out, and he'll go right after me. Or you can do head nods again. So I nod saying that I'm ready. He'll give me the nod back telling me to go. As I'm going, whether it be you know verbal or the head nod, he will lower his muzzle real quick. That was bad light discipline again. He'll lower his muzzle real quick. Or you know if he has good trigger discipline, he doesn't necessarily need to do that um, because you wanna be able to, again, minimize that time it takes for him to get to his corner. So either he gives me the verbal or he gives me the head nod. I'm gonna drive my corner. As I'm doing this, the second there's space behind me, he's going to be driving his corner as well. I see that it's clear, and I'm gonna start scanning the rest of the room. Now again, I already saw what this room looks like, so I know what to handle. I see there's some dead space in the corner, so I'm gonna you know, maybe light it up, and I'm gonna go to my dominant position and I'll sort of explain that here in a little bit. But okay, I was the one man, I went over here to my corner. Again, let's say that this was a two man. I signaled this guy to go. He goes, I lower my muzzle, and then I drive my corner. I see it's clear, and then I start scanning. So what you wanna do, whenever you see that your corner is clear, you don't want to just walk all the way to the corner and then turn. It's just, 
it's pointless. The second you see that the corner is clear, you can start scanning the rest of the room. Again, we already know the room's probably clear because we were able to see it from the other room, but let's say you know there's a little bit of dead space behind some furniture. I can start scanning. After I see my corner's clear, I can immediately start scanning and moving to my dominant position or point of domination. So I'll show you guys what the point of domination would look like. But real quick, the three man or four man, if you're utilizing those, you have the one man go in, two man go in, whether three man's on this side or this side, it doesn't really matter. His job, because the corners are getting cleared, his job is just to, to get to the front. Again, we already know that it's pretty much clear, but the small possibility that there's a really small guy crouched behind the couch, the three man can take that as these guys are going in. So the second their body armor starts giving me some room, so one man goes, two man goes, I'm ready to go. They split apart, I'm getting my weapon up, and I'm coming in, I can go to this side, or I can go to this side, and I'm just getting this whole area right here. And if there's a four man, he'd be doing the same thing, except he'd probably go to the opposite side just so we're not standing in the fatal funnel. And that's pretty much how that would go. Now again, you do have points of domination, mainly for the one and two man. The three, the three and four men are gonna be kind of flexible just based off of the size of the room and also the orientation of the room. So there's generally three types of rooms that we'll talk about. You have center fed, corner fed, and short wall. Here we have a center fed room. So the doorway is pretty much in the center of the room. You have some pretty good space for corners, so you need to clear those out. And I'll show you an example of a corner fed room when we're actually doing the points of domination. Okay, so the quality might look a little bit different here, but I'm just trying to make sure I get a good wide angle of the room. Okay, so this is a corner fed room. So we saw the center fed room where the doorway was pretty much in the center of the room and you had, you know, some pretty good space for the corners. But because this is corner fed, the doorway is in the corner. You don't really need to clear this corner out necessarily because, you know, there's probably, unless you got like flat Stanley back here behind, behind the door, there's not really anything to worry about. Now with the short wall room, there would be a little bit of wall behind this door. So as you close this door, or as you open this door, I should say, there'll be a little bit of dead space behind it because there's, you know, there's a little bit of wall on this side. So you probably have to do a door check, which will go into depth a little bit later on, but you'd have to check behind the door to make sure that there's no one inside that small corner. But because this is corner fed room, we don't have to worry about clearing this out so much. So let's say we're trying to clear this room out and we're coming from this way. So I just pied across over here and now I'm ready to go in. So I see that everything is clear except for this corner. So it makes sense for me to take this corner. So this dude over here, instead of taking the corner, since there is really no corner, he's going to go over in this direction. He's gonna ride this wall. So for me, because I can see the wall right here, I can't see this wall, you know, I can't see this wall or I can't see the, the corner. So I can see that wall. So my goal, my point of domination is to go 75% of the wall I see upon entry. So I see this wall. So I want to go 75% of it. Now I can't necessarily because we have a bed here. Now if this bed wasn't here, I would clear my corner out and then I start riding up this wall. So I got about 75%. Now the reason you go 75% is because if there's like furniture, like you see with this, you know, this little dresser right here, if it was taller, if I went 75% of this wall I saw upon entry, I would be able to clear out most of the dead space on this side of the room. So most of the room would be cleared out. Now for that two man, so I'm taking my corner and then he's coming over here. So if he has a corner to clear, he'll, he'll clear out his corner, but he's going to go 25% of the wall that he sees. So he's coming in, he sees this wall, so he's gonna go 25%. So since I don't have a corner, I'm just gonna go right here, about 25%. You know, if this wasn't here, I could go maybe a little bit further, but this is about 25%, so I'm gonna stop right here. Just enough so I'm not really in the fatal funnel as much, and at the same time, I don't want to go 75% of this, because if you have the one man going up this wall, and then me coming up this wall, as we're scanning our sectors, if we just see someone start running into our vision or you know moving into our vision, we might get a little bit paranoid and be like, oh snap, you know, there's someone moving in, in the room. So if I stay here, I stay out of his way, and I'm just going to sweep until I get about six feet off of the dude, of the one man. So 
He's going to come in, go 75% of his wall. I'm going to sweep till I get about, you know, six feet off of his muzzle, and then I'm going to chill out. And he's going to do the same thing. He's going to go 75% of his wall. Again, I would if the bed wasn't here. And then I would sweep about six feet off of this guy's muzzle. And because the two men isn't sweeping all the way up here, I know I'm not going to have any issues, you know, getting paranoid and seeing someone moving into my sector because he's going to chill out all the way back here. So that's pretty much how it would go. You know, people might do it different ways. The biggest thing is taking down the danger areas. Again, the one man's going to get his, his corner, the two man can get his corner, and then the one man going 75% of the wall he sees just clears out most of the dead space that you might have on this side, just due to furniture and whatnot. The two man's not necessarily worried about dead space because the one man, whenever he's going 75% of that wall that he sees, if there's furniture on his side of the room, he can clear that out on the move or what have you. Okay, so I'll put the lapel mic down and I'll give you guys a little bit of a demonstration so you guys can kind of see. So, I will be the one man right now. Again, sweeping six foot off of this guy's muzzle. Now for the two man, I had the one man pie across. One man makes entry, I'm following right after him. So there's no corner to clear. I see that's pretty much clear. I'm gonna go 25% and sweep and then I'll go about six foot off of his muzzle so we're not sweeping into each other. Again, things can get pretty hot and heavy when you're talking about CQB environments, when the flash pangs are going off, when people are shooting, there might be a lot of smoke in the room. So it might be kind of hard to tell real quick who's who and who's moving around. So you don't wanna be having the two man go all the way up here, sweeping into the one man sector of fire. Now again, if you have a three and four man, it's going to be like this. You have the one man come in, he can go, you know, depending on which side you're coming from, he's going wherever, two man's going wherever. Three man, his job is to get, you know, the center of the room, the 12 o'clock, because the corners are going to be cleared. So one man goes in, two man goes in, three man, he's getting 12. And then because, you know, I can maybe go here and scoot the two man over if I want, but since there's a lot of room on this side, I'll probably just end up coming over here and then if there's a four man, he'll probably end up coming over here as well. So he's not getting stuck in the fatal funnel. And so we're not, you know, pushing on the two man, you know. So if the two man sees something and the, the three man comes in and pushes him over and all of a sudden the two man is exposed to something, it's not going to be good. So just try and go wherever you can fit, uh, especially in weird rooms like this. You're going to find you need to be very flexible and you need to use something called initiative based tactics, which basically means find a job, but don't get in the way. So yeah, it's kind of weird. CQB is a really weird environment. So it helps to train on different rooms, different layouts, especially when you don't know the layout. So you can actually think about it on the move and not, you know, game the game. If you know the layout of the room, you know naturally where to put yourself. So it's nice to practice on, you know, rooms or facilities that you're not familiar with. Or if you can change up the walls, change up the doors, that is really awesome training as well. Now, I know I sort of breezed over the whole flashbang thing, but I can't really do it because I don't have a stack of people. But of course, if you're the one man going in, you're not going to be the one throwing the flashbang. It's probably going to be the two man or whoever's behind the one man, someone who's not directly occupied in holding security on that danger area. So that's going to be the one implementing the flashbang. Again, they're gonna try and get it in the immediate area. Whenever it goes off or as it's going off, you have people make an entry and that's pretty much how it would go. If I can get more people or if I can, you know, just find a, again, I'm gonna try and get another, you know, house or facility so I can do this, these videos. But if I can manage that, then I'll try and do that to get a little bit more flashbang stuff in just so you guys can sort of visualize it a little bit better. But yeah, flashbangs are a lot of fun and they increase your survivability a lot. So if you can utilize them, I would definitely recommend it. But that's pretty much it. You have your points of domination. Again, one man is going 75% of the wall he sees upon entry. Two men is going 25%, so he's not going into the one man sector of fire. And that's pretty much how that would go. Try not to get stuck in the fatal funnel so you're not getting perforated in the doorway. And at the same time, don't screw over your buddies by pushing them over and trying to you know, make way into the room. If you do have a, a dude who really needs to get out of the way, it might be okay to shove him so you're not getting you know, stuck right inside the doorway. And that will happen sometimes because some dudes will just you know, freeze up. They might see something weird. You know, sometimes you just need to be like, hey, you know, move so I'm not getting lit up. 
but that's pretty much how that would go. So let me know what you guys think about this episode. This is probably the last episode I'm going to do in this building. Again, I wanna try and get some different places and change it up a little bit just so we can try different layouts and try different aspects. And then as far as more advanced stuff, as far as hallways and maybe low light nighttime stuff, I'll try and do some, some low light or you know no light stuff next because nighttime considerations are very different but it's also a lot of fun to do and practice. So I'll try and do that next. But as far as more, you know, hallway oriented stuff or stairs, some of the more advanced stuff that requires a lot of people, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do that just now. If you guys want me to try, I can. But again, I know I'm sort of pushing it, not being able to show you guys me doing all this at once or, you know, having a, a team do it. But Hopefully you guys learned something from you know these, these episodes so far. It is a lot of fun. Again, I have a lot of fun teaching CQB. Again, everybody has a bunch of different ways to do it. So if you guys have you know some disagreements, that's totally fine. You can throw it down in the comment section. I'm more than willing to learn. I'm not stuck in my ways. I'm just teaching what I sort of learned. You know, stuff that I taught or that, that I was taught in the schoolhouse and stuff that I learned later on, uh, you know, in different units. But let me know what you guys think about this video. It was a lot of fun to record. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, feel free to hit the thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think. If you guys wanna support me on Patreon so I can get more facilities like this and do more training, get more props maybe, then you can do that as well. You can also buy some merch and I do, I do appreciate it. So thank you guys for supporting the channel. Thank you for letting me do what I love. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. That is it for this one. I will see you all in the next one.